Good evening and welcome to this community meeting for the city of Santa Rosa's local road safety plan focusing on the roadway corridors along 4th Street from East Street to Farmers Lane and Montgomery Drive from Alderbrook Drive to Hammond Drive. I'm Rob Sprinkle, the Deputy Director of Traffic Engineering for the City of Santa Rosa, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Before we begin the presentation, our host, Lauren Wiley, with the City of Santa Rosa, and our translator, Marina Martinez, will explain how the meeting will work. Got it. Marina, if you'd like to translate. Uh, okay. Bienvenido a, al proyecto, a la presentación del proyecto esta noche. Eh, vamos a, a pedirle a Lauren que nos explique cómo se ocupa la interpretación. Go ahead, Lauren. Or Shelly. Thank you, Marina. As community members join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the city's website following the meeting. At the end of the presentation, Rob will open up the meeting for public questions and comment. Great, thank you, Lauren. So once again, I wanna thank you all for joining us tonight. Your participation and input are important to us and so we discuss the best practices for improving our safety on our city roadways for all users. We'll start tonight's meeting with a quick overview of the agenda and the topics we plan to cover in the presentation. So, uh, the project description for tonight's discussion, the local road safety plan will focus on the roadway corridors from 4th Street on 4th Street from E Street to Farmers Lane and Montgomery Drive from Alderbrook Drive to Hammond Drive. Improvements being considered along these corridors include installation of bike lanes, lane reductions, and pedestrian enhancements. We will get into the details in the presentation, but this is where we're really looking for feedback from our community. For example, when we're looking at options on Montgomery Drive, we want to hear from you regarding issues with the existing conditions, if our design addresses those concerns, or if the concerns with if there are concerns with our proposed design. The options we're presenting uh, will, uh, were discussed during our stakeholder meetings. Uh, with our police, fire, transit, and some other folks that are, we covered on our presentation. And we have concurrence on our options that were presented from that stakeholder group. There are likely other options that you can present and potentially construct hybrid of different options of those that are being presented uh, to propose to us. So we're, we are looking for, we are honestly just looking for feedback from the community on these options that we're presenting. So the time for, for this project, um, we are very far out ahead of this project um, for any implementation uh, for any of the striping related issues for these projects. Our intent is to get feedback on the initial design now and then return back to the community in late summer or fall with a final design. Then we look for uh, the implementation to be constructed with our slurry seal project, which is planned for spring, summer of 2023. So we are very far out ahead of this project and really wanna get your input. I would now like to uh, turn the, this over to the presentation and to Catherine Klein-Schmidt. She's the project manager consultant from GHD Consulting. Catherine will present the data and the potential improvement options for the roadway corridors along 4th Street and Montgomery Drive looking at the data-driven collision analysis and roadway connectivity obstacles identified in our pedestrian, our bicycle and pedestrian master plan. Following her presentation, we will open it up for comments and questions and concerns for the community. There will also be information on how you can provide your comments online. Catherine? 
Thank you, Rob. Good evening, everyone. Next slide. Um, it's my pleasure to work with the city of Santa Rosa on their local road safety plan. Tonight, we're, I'm gonna be presenting on two of the corridors that we studied, 4th Street and Montgomery, uh, Montgomery Drive. Next slide, please. So I wanted to touch on our agenda for tonight. I'm gonna to go over the background of the local road safety plan program, as well as how it complements the bicycle and pedestrian master plan. Um, vision and goals and our stakeholder working group meeting, as well as I'll get into the two different study corridors, um, Montgomery Drive and 4th Street. We're gonna look at the collision data, the existing conditions, as well as the proposed options we're wanting to get feedback on tonight. Um, as well as uh, we'll look at uh, the other E's, the different traffic safety E's, and then public engagement. As you can see, there's a website link. Um, I'll get to that at the end of the presentation where you can leave feedback um, if you um, want to do it through the web portal format. Next slide, please. Okay, and the background, uh, the city of Santa Rosa did receive funding through Caltrans to perform a local road safety plan in 2020. This is because Caltrans is now requiring every agency in uh, California to have this local road safety plan to be eligible for highway safety improvement program funding for the next cycle, which actually is uh, cycle 11. It opens in April uh, this year. Um, and this is just a, a background of how the funding kind of rolls down. It comes from the federal go government, the U.S. Department of Transportation, through Caltrans. They administer that. Um, the state is required to have a strategic highway safety plan, and then now every agency is having a local road safety plan. Next slide, please. So the city of Santa Rosa has a uh, bicycle and pedestrian master plan that was updated in 2018. This plan is complementing the vision and goals that came out of that plan. The vision of that plan is uh, what they're trying to accomplish is Santa Rosa is a community where walking and bicycling are comfortable, convenient, and common for people of all ages and abilities. And the goals is how they're gonna get there. They're gonna increase access and comfort, maintain, expand the network, as well as support a culture of walking and biking. Next slide, please. So this plan studied the entire city and they looked at where there was high injury uh, collisions for bicycle and pedestrians. And two of the corridors that were identified we're gonna be discussing tonight. Corridor one is 4th Street from D Street to Farmer's Lane. Um, it, it, it is a high injury network. It has limited space, so it was recommended to have uh, further studies done to look at developing alternatives, as well as Corridor 4, Montgomery Drive from Alderbrook Drive to Hallman Drive is also identified uh, to be looked at further, and that's why we're evaluating it in our local road safety plan. Next slide, please. So some of the guiding principles of this plan is vision zero. We do uh, want to create a plan where we acknowledge that we can create a systems approach in preventing fatal and severe injury crashes and traffic deaths are preventable. Um, so how do we get there? This actually right now, the county, Sonoma County has a vision zero two that's being ran by the health department. So that they're also spearheading that effort and, and looking at how to holistically create a system where we can really strive to reduce fatal and severe injury collisions. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, the state does have a strategic highway safety plan. Uh, it's right here, this California Safe Roads. Um, so this plan is complementing that state's plan. And out of that state's plan is the five traffic safety ease. So not only do we wanna look at engineering countermeasures when we look at how to improve the safety of our roadways, but we also wanna understand that there's other uh, ease that can help. And those are enforcement, education, emergency services, and emerging technologies. Those other ease are also opportunities to improve safety. Next slide, please. 
As Rob mentioned, we did have a stakeholder working group meeting last year at the end of June, June 30th, and we did discuss uh, 4th Street and Montgomery Drive corridors at length. And um, coming up, I'll show you kind of the recommendations that came out of those meetings. But we got a representative group of the different stakeholders with the city, um, the Santa Rosa Fire Department, the Police Department, as well as um, Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition, the city bus, and the different schools uh, that are affected in those areas. Next slide, please. So this is a look at the past um, six years of collisions in the city of Santa Rosa. Um, and we've separated out on the left. Those are non-pedestrian bicycle uh, collisions. So those are vehicle to vehicle collisions and we're looking at it by severity. You can kind of see that um, there was uh, a fatal in 2015, uh, 2016, you know, there was, a, there was four fatal severe injuries. Um, but overall, when you start comparing the severity of collisions to the graph, the bar chart on the right, where we're looking at pedestrian and bicycle collisions, you're starting to see that there are more severe injury collisions as well as the fatals. So we really want to target on how can we bring those injury collisions down as a, as a whole and focus on um, reducing the overall severity. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, I'll get into the Montgomery Drive corridor. Um, just looking at the collision analysis, we pulled um, 2015 through 2019 and looking at the severity there, we did notice a concentration um, at the intersection, Montgomery Drive and Farmers Lane, uh, as well as Hammond Lane. And then there was some along the corridor um, just east of Sherwood. Um, there was a bicycle to vehicle collision that was an injury uh, just to west of Short Street, as well as there was a severe injury pedestrian to vehicles collision at the intersection of Farmers Lane and Montgomery Drive. Next slide, please. So through the working group meeting, we got feedback about the uh, conditions along this roadway. And we looked at first the section of Montgomery Drive uh, from Alderbrook Drive to Farmers Lane. That section is, you know, narrow. There's cars um, that are parked on the sidewalk due to the narrow section of the roadway. You can kind of see it in the picture there. Um, there is a center two-way left turn lane uh, that could possibly be, you know, utilized for other space and uh, adding a facility for bike lanes, um, but we do acknowledge that neighborhood engagement is needed. Next slide, please. So existing conditions, there's about 44 roadway width along that section. Um, there is one lane in each direction with the two a left turn lane as well as parking on both sides. Um, low traffic volumes about 8500 vehicles per day. Next slide please. So getting into the proposed conditions, uh, we've got two different options um, and utilizing some of the roadway width, um, we can look at eliminating that center turn lane and then providing bike lanes in each direction adjacent to the parking. Uh, that would help to separate the bicycles and the vehicle traffic. Uh, it can also provide a traffic calming uh, you know, effect because uh, the turning traffic will now be in the through lanes. Um, other option was option two, where you look at, okay, if you could uh, even utilize more space and buffering the bicyclists from the vehicle travel lanes, you could uh, look at removing um, the parking on the north side. Uh, and that was due to um, the way the, the cross section there is um, that the, you know, the, the, the way that the direct access for the driveways are uh, is more on the other side. So this would help uh, to provide a buffer between the vehicles and the cyclists. Next slide, please. 
On the other section of Montgomery Drive from Farmers Lane to Hammond Drive, we evaluated that uh, and with the working group and we got feedback that we could look at how to resign, uh, redesign that to accommodate parking, bike lanes and travel lanes. Uh, but uh, there is a very small median that would be uh, required to be removed. Next slide, please. So the existing conditions, it's 63 roadway width, and uh, there's two lanes uh, going into the eastbound direction, and then one lane, wide lane going in the westbound that kind of breaks off into a right turn lane at the intersection. You can kind of see that typical section above is right in the middle of the roadway. Um, there is parking along that southern side. And so, uh, and, and there is a two way left turn lane. There's around 16,000 vehicles uh, per day with, and there's also sidewalks along both sides. Uh, next slide, please. In evaluating the proposed conditions, we're looking at how, okay, how can we uh, incorporate the bike lanes by utilizing some of the roadway width and just by uh, reducing the 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 lane widths, uh, the two way left turn lane to 10 feet and the travel lane width to 11, you can utilize some space to free up for a six foot bike lane in each direction and then uh, keep that parking along that side that would help to separate the cyclists from the vehicles and kind of creates a buffer for the pedestrians from the vehicles, as well as it can slow the vehicle speeds due to the narrow uh, travel lanes. Next slide. So Fourth Street corridor we're going to cover next. This uh, corridor length went all the way from East Street to Farmers Lane as shown here in the map. Next slide please. In evaluating the five-year collision uh, and the severity of those collisions we saw that there were some severe injury collisions at East Street, Brighton, and Farmers. And then there's concentration of collisions uh, typically at the intersection at Brookwood. There's a concentration there, College, uh, but there is some in the mid block. Uh, and then there's a concentration of Brighton and, and, and Farmers. Next slide, please. And evaluating the pedestrian to vehicle collisions, uh, this slide is showing you where those were occurring and the severity. That severe injury that we saw on the previous slide at E Street was uh, during the day, it was a vehicle to pedestrian collision, but there's other uh, two other injury pedestrian to vehicle collisions that occurred at night. Um, again, there's other, collisions with pedestrians and vehicles, one at Brookwood and Bryden that are injuries. And then farmers had a couple, one in the day and the night, as well as just west of farmers. Next slide, please. In evaluating the bicycle to vehicle collisions, there was a concentration of those at the Brookwood intersection. Uh, but there was one at Alderbrook and East Street, as well as um, one west of Farmers. Next slide, please. From our meetings with the from our meeting with the working group, um, we did um, discuss uh, that section from uh, Fourth Street from E Street to Brookwood. And it, looking at that section here, it's quite different with the angled parking on both sides and the wider travel lanes. So we were evaluating how can we free up some of that space to incorporate some bike lanes. And um, feedback from that working group was looking at converting that angled parking on the south side to parallel can really free up some roadway width, as well as if you can narrow those travel lanes down to 11 feet. That was the minimum um, for the city bus, since this is a route of theirs, um, as well as look at uh, widening the sidewalks uh, with the incorporation of the bike lanes and adding some uh, street trees and other forms of beautification. Next slide, please. 
So the existing conditions along this section of 4th Street from E Street to Brookwood is there's wide traveling, 16 feet in either direction with the angled parking and then the six foot sidewalks. Um, not a lot of vehicles through this area, around um, 8,200 vehicles per day. Next slide, please. So there's a couple options uh, that we came up with the working group and um, looking at the first option, option one, is uh, both options are, um, you know, reevaluating though the parking and converting that southern side from the diagonal to the parallel, but the option one is looking at back end angled parking rather than pull in front end. And that's uh, the reason for that there's been a lot of safety benefits when the vehicle backs up they can't see directly to the cyclist or the bike lane you know it's kind of over the shoulder but if they back in and then pull out they have eyes on the roadway. And so the visibility to the cyclist is a lot clear that way, as well as you can load your car off this, you know, from the sidewalk area and not be in the travel way. Um, I, both uh, options is providing a buffered bike lane. Option one has a six foot bike lane with a two foot buffer that's between the travel way and uh, the cyclist, uh, which is proven to provide a, a, you know, more of a level of comfort. Um, looking at option two, you look at another option where you not only um, have uh, the diagonal parking still on that north side, but you look at flipping that with the bike lane and providing a protected bike lane. So now the cyclist is along the sidewalk and buffered from the parking. And so that's that's even more buffer from this for for the cyclist and the pedestrian from the travel way. And then you have your 11 foot lanes, and then you have a three foot buffer with the six foot uh, bike lane and your eight foot parallel parking. Um, so there's different, um, you know. Uh, uh, there's different um, ways you can look at the two different options. They both have good improvements that can provide added safety for the cyclist. Next slide, please. In evaluating that section of uh, 4th Street from Brookwood Avenue to Br uh, Bryden Lane, we got uh, feedback from the working group about how we could utilize some of that space for bike lanes as well as looking at white and sidewalks. Um, just looking at the, the section here, it's two lanes in each direction. You could utilize some space by converting one of those lanes um, to a two-way left turn lane. So then your turning vehicles are now in a two-way left turn lane instead of stopping in the through lane. Um, other recommendations was looking at how to um, improve the crossing enhancements at Alderbrook as well as uh, considering a future roundabout at that uh, intersection of fourth and college with all those sweeping movements there and looking at how to widen the sidewalk on the south side of fourth between Alderbrook and Brighton. It's pretty narrow along there. Next slide, please. So looking at fourth street from Brookwood to Brighton, um, this section has um, two lanes in each direction with parking on both sides. Um, and the, the volumes are very different from Brookwood to college. You've got around 11,200 vehicles today, uh, vehicles a day, but then from college to Talbot, you've got closer to 23,000 vehicles per, uh, per day. So, uh, we do recognize that the volumes are increasing along that east side. Um, but there's really no choke points. You know, there's only a signal at college and then there's one there at Brighton. So it's more or less free flowing traffic there. Next slide, please. Uh, the proposed conditions uh, for the section from Brookwood to Bryden is looking at how to utilize space for buffered bike lanes by converting one of those lanes uh, to a two-way left turn lane. So having a 11 foot travel lane in each direction with a two-way left turn lane, and then you can have a nice buffered bike lane adjacent to the travel way and parking. This is gonna provide enhancements not only for the cyclists and having a separated 
uh, lane from traffic, but also for the pedestrians more buffered from the travel way. Um, and then we would look to put those green conflict markings at the intersections for the bike lanes um, and, uh, you know, different uh, improvements with the turning traffic will now go in the two way left turn lane instead of stopping in the through lane. Next slide, please. So here's a drawing of that corridor and looking at where we would, uh, you know, uh, put those green conflict markings. Uh, there's a call out there at college for the potential of a future roundabout there. Um, but this is the overall concept of how we could, you know, kind of re uh, stripe this corridor to provide um, accommodations for all road users. Next slide, please. Other uh, recommendations is looking at sidewalk and bike improvements, especially in that area from Alderbrook Drive to Bryden Lane. Um, in the interim, uh, you know, there could be wide buffered bike lanes in the eastbound direction uh, to provide people on foot and bike with additional buffer from traffic. But long term, we, we do recognize that the sidewalk needs to be widened. Um, and it would be nice to have a bicycle waiting area and bike signal uh, at Brighton. Next slide, please. So this is looking at the proposed conditions along this section here um, from Alderbrook to Brighton. Uh, next slide. We're looking at enhancing this crossing in Alderbrook and pro, uh, providing a kind of a bulb out curb extension there to increase the sight distance to the vehicles uh, along 4th Street for the pedestrians crossing. Next slide. Um, and then a crossing street uh, treatment. Next slide. As well as looking at how to widen the sidewalk along that uh, southern side. It's very narrow. Next slide. And then uh, bike signals at that signalized intersection there to facilitate that movement up north. And next slide, please. So for the last section on 4th Street from Bryden Lane to Farmer's Line, um, we did uh, discuss this with the working group. It has much higher traffic volumes. We've got about 33,000 vehicles per day. Um, there's not, with that much volume, there's not a lot of opportunities to uh, take away a travel lane. You'll, you'll get a lot of congestion. Um, there is two lanes in each direction with a two-way left turn lane, and there's parking on the south side. So feedback we got is, you know, to look at um, how can you incorporate, a, 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 you know, with some wayfinding, another route that could possibly go through the neighborhoods with lower volumes um, as an alternate bike route. Sign. So these are some alternate routes. As I mentioned, uh, it, if these are proposed to move forward, there'd be wayfinding uh, signage installed, but the general routes, um, I'm, I'm not gonna read off all the names of the roads that they go through, but you know, for the westbound, you're kind of going up Clyde and, and uh, well, I guess you're going over to the shopping center, but you're kind of going to Via Geary, Morley and Applied to kind of, you know, uh, many other streets to get over there, but that kind of gets you over to the shopping center and then eastbound, you could look at going up Brighton and then kind of over there on Gross and then over to the shopping center. Next slide, please. So other items I'm going to cover tonight. Next slide. So as I mentioned, not all um, safety issues can be um, mitigated with uh, engineering countermeasures. We also need to look at the other traffic safety ease. So there's different education strategies, um, looking at driver education, especially distracted driving campaigns, um, bicycle pedestrian sa safety campaigns, and use a light at night, wear bright clothes, continuing the safe browse to school maps and outreach. Uh, a lot of uh, different things can be uh, through, you know, conveyed through social media blasts with some different quick education tools with the stakeholders, um, as well as partnering with your regional partners, Sonoma County, SCTA, 
the city of Santa Rosa already has kind of the Keep Kids Alive Drive 25, the speed management campaigns, as well as emerging technologies, looking at improving your ITS infrastructure, um, smart city type practices, uh, getting video detection so your bicycles are detected at your intersections, um, looking at more uh, leading pedestrian intervals uh, at your intersections, as well as installing this uh, the accessible pedestrian signals that are now touchless. You just wave your hand. So really trying to look at how to get the message to the public more. Next slide, please as well as there's you know other uh, ways to mitigate speeds with enforcement focus those uh, on the school zone areas as well as where there's concerns from the residents um, looking at really reducing the duis with some saturation patrols and looking at you know how to increase the traffic enforcement in the area as well as you know we want to uh, with all uh, you know solutions we want to uh, acknowledge how important it is to have emergency response and have that the roadways you know always uh, look at how to uh, provide that access and reduce con congestion and potentially shorten response times as well as have that vehicle preemption at the signalized intersections next slide please so this is the timeline of the local road safety plan. Um, as we presented, the stakeholder meeting was back in June on the 30th uh, in 2021. Here we are tonight at our public meeting, uh, 2 to 22 <laughs> kind of interesting how the dates worked out. We're also looking to have another public meeting on Dutton Avenue on March 2nd, and then looking at a final uh, public meeting in September. Um, we do have public engagement uh, opportunities, you know, at the end of this presentation, as well as through the website. Uh, next slide. And through this website that's live now, you can go in. It has a Google Translate option, and it'll actually sense your browser settings. So if you are browsing in a different language, it will automatically ask to translate. But if it doesn't, you can hit the Google Translate option and pick the language. Um, it, this website has an interactive map, so you can see the city of Santa Rosa, you can zoom in, you can add an aerial on it, and you can pinpoint your areas of concern for either vehicles, um, bicycles, pedestrians, um, schools. So we really want to collect comments through the interactive map. Next slide, please as well as the surveys. We developed two surveys um, for the two corridors we discussed tonight, one from Montgomery Drive. We would like your feedback on those. This will all be um, captured through the plan, as well as four street survey. Next slide, please. And so it was my pleasure to present to you tonight. I'm gonna turn it, that concludes uh, the presentation and I'm gonna turn it back over to Rob. Great, thank you, Catherine. So my information is up on the slide currently. That's how you can reach me through email or through phone. Um, email is preferred. That way I can get back to you um, probably sooner. Um, but at this point, I want to um, take the opportunity to um, hear from you, our community. So we'll now move on to our question and answer portion of the meeting. However, before we begin, I will ask Lauren to review how you can participate by asking live questions and comments. Thank you, Rob. Once Rob calls for public questions or comments, we will announce for anyone wishing to ask questions or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. We will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. Your microphone will be unmuted so you may ask your question. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted so our panelists may respond to your questions. Shelly, are we ready for our first meeting attendee to ask their question or provide a comment? Yes, we are. Thank you, Rob. If you need to have your question translated, please let us know once you've been called and then allow us a moment to confirm that the translator is ready. Uh, please remember to speak a little slower so our translation team can relay your question. Uh, if you're wishing to ask a question or make a comment, you can raise your Zoom hand 
again, as Lauren said, you can also, if you're calling in by phone, press star nine, and that will raise your hand for you. Uh, your phone numbers have been changed to reflect the last four digits of your phone number, so I will call on you by that. So the first person we have in our queue is Michael. Michael, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and unmute yourself. Go ahead, Michael. Michael LaPelt, do you have a comment? All right, Michael, we'll come back to you. Uh, Sarah, we're gonna ask you to unmute. Go ahead, Sarah. Okay, um, I had a question. So I bike everywhere and I live um, right near Proctor Terrace School and I bike a lot downtown into Montgomery Village and I try to do everything on my bike. But one of the issues that I find beyond just the traffic is the fact that businesses and places don't have any place for bike racks. And so you end up having to put your bike like on a, um, a traffic, like on a parking meter, you know, and there it's in the way of pedestrians. So will there be like sort of a business buy-in too? Because even like at Montgomery Village, there are not many bike racks. And so it makes it harder to bike. And it also means that you feel sometimes in those places, like you have to go on the sidewalks and interfere with people walking. So great, thank you for the question. Um, we do have contacts with Montgomery Village, um, so we can ask them for additional bike racks. We also um, are actually doing a bike rack inventory in our downtown. Um, I think it's actually just recently completed. I'm not sure if we will be able to map that information or not, um, but that would be, I'm sure a great help if we could provide something of that magnitude for um, for bike racks. So I will put that on my list. Thank you. Okay, we also uh, have some people that are sending in questions for Q and A. Those will be addressed at the very end after we've called on all of our our hands that have been raised. Uh, Michael, we're going to go ahead and ask you to unmute. Michael, are you ready to speak? Go ahead, Michael. Okay, some technical difficulties. We'll come back to you, okay, Michael? Jennifer, we're gonna ask you to unmute. Hi, thanks so much for hosting this meeting tonight. Um, I wanted to ask, about the section of Montgomery Drive heading from Hammon east towards Mission or Summerfield. And I was taking a look at the city's bicycle and pedestrian plan and noticed that we have a very high number of vehicle pedestrian accidents and bicycle pedestrian accidents. In fact, we're one of the high injury networks um, in the city's area for bicycle and vehicle accidents. And so it seemed like you know, of course, there are needed improvements over towards the area that is being studied, but I was wondering why is this section of Montgomery Drive not being studied and when can we expect to see improvements on our road? Great, thank you, that's a great question. So um, you'll also find in the bike and pedestrian master plan that there were some segments of areas that had not been previously studied that were prioritized by uh, our bike and pedestrian um, board for the, the highest locations that they would like to see studied first. So although there, there are needs throughout the community, you're absolutely right. Um, the ones that we're looking at today were the ones that were brought to the, the highest level from, from the board. So that's why we chose to address those locations first. And I'm not saying that there aren't needs in other locations throughout the city, there absolutely are, but we have to start somewhere. So that's, that's where we began. Thank you. Um, we're gonna try Michael again. Michael, we're gonna try you again. Go ahead and unmute. Michael, we're still unable to hear you. Michael, maybe you could put your question into the Q&A um, question chat instead. 
Thank you. We're going to move on to Monona. Monona, go ahead. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, I had a question about the uh, section of Montgomery Drive from Farmers Lane East. Um, I wasn't aware that there was parking on the side of the, on the south side of the street there because I almost never see anyone park there except for a few random cars and it's parking that's adjacent to a large parking lot. So I was wondering if you would consider eliminating parking on that side of the street to allow for more space for the bike lanes. And um, I had another question also about E Street, the crossing at um, Talbot Ave, I've seen used by a lot of cyclists. I used that section and I was just there the other day and saw cyclists there and was wondering if you would consider improving that crossing for cyclists. Right now there's a, um, a pedestrian blinker and um, I've seen when cyclists come along, sometimes they go over to the crosswalk. I saw a woman got off her bike to walk across the crosswalk. And if there was another, a crossing that was closer to St. Helena Ave that was more convenient for cyclists, that would, I think, really improve. I like crossing at that section rather than Alderbrook because the visibility, the sight lines are better. And I think it's a safer spot to cross, although I think the road diet will make the whole section safer. So I'm really excited to see that you're going forward with that. Um, yeah, those are my main two questions. Okay, great. So um, there is parking allowed currently, yes, on the south side of um, Montgomery between Farmers and Hammond. Uh, our goal is to try not to uh, Take that parking away if at all possible and we did manage to find a way to incorporate the bike lanes without removing that parking um, we can reach out to the montgomery village to see if how much that is utilized um, i have seen people park there quite a bit but maybe i'm there during a specific time of day when it's it's it is being utilized um, as for talbot the um we we are looking at the possibility of putting in a, a, a hawk type flasher at that location. Um, but first we wanna do the installation of the uh, road diet because we really feel that that's going to accommodate a lot of the, the needs of both pedestrians and cyclists who will be crossing there. By changing the, the section of the roadway from a four lane to a three lane, you basically almost eliminate the, the multi-threat collision, which is where one vehicle stops in one lane and the vehicle in the adjacent lane doesn't know why they're stopping and they continue to go and then all of a sudden they see a pedestrian or someone in front of them who they need to stop for. So changing this to a road diet will definitely have a lot of benefits for both pedestrians and cyclists who are who are attempting to cross that that location. Um, and I do agree with you, the visibility is better at the um, at the Talbot crossing than Alderbrook, which is why one of the reasons why we're proposing to put in a, a bull belt at that location. Thank you. Uh, Steve, we're going to ask you to unmute. Go ahead, Steve. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for the presentation. There are a lot of good ideas here. Um, the bulb outs, the bike lanes, the sidewalks being expanded, the road diet, all really, really good to pursue. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit uh, more on 4th Street because I live near there. Um, I do want to say something about accident data, though, because most people I know don't even try to cross 4th Street. It just is really dangerous in spite of the crosswalks that have been the lights that have been put in. It's a very wide street. Um, the drivers, you know, they don't always even see you once you start walking. And as a four lane street, it's very challenging to cross it. So I think it's just as intimidating. Um, one thing that I wanted to bring up is, is to expand the, or to improve the street markings and the lights on those intersections, you know, where the pedestrian and uh, ways are across the, uh, the street on 4th. 
Um, but two other things occur to me. One, I think there should be more enforcement considered. There are never police in the area. And um, I think it's an important thing to establish some presence of enforcement. But I have yet one more suggestion, lowering the traffic speed from 35 to 30. My understanding is that the local jurisdictions have a lot more influence now in terms of studying the lowering of traffic speeds. When you're talking about that curve between Brighton and uh, you know Alderbrook, um, and uh, you know that is a really um, that's a really dangerous uh, kind of um, curve in there um, along towards Spring Street there. So I'm just wondering about traffic speeds. Have you considered lowering them? So thank you, Steve. Yes, we so when we. Um, set speed limits throughout the city of Santa Rosa, we do it using the engineering traffic survey guidelines, which are in the manual manual of uniform traffic control devices, which is set out by Caltrans and it's a standardized way that it's used to set speed limits throughout the jurisdiction. Uh, this past year they just did change a um, state assembly bill that will allow us to um, lower those speed limits and have them be radar enforceable. Um, but not until the, the legislation won't be effective until July, I mean, July of 2024. So we have about two years, two and a half years until that change is made. Um, and, and that will give us additional flexibility that we currently don't have um, to lower the speed limits and maintain that radar enforceability. One of the main things about keeping it radar enforceable is that, um, and what's important for that is, is that's the primary word primary way, excuse me, that our police do enforcement throughout the city. So we can post a speed limit at, at any speed. Um, say you posted it at 25 on 4th Street. People would tend to keep going at the at the speed that they're going because that's the comfortable speed, which is probably more around 35 miles an hour, maybe 36 miles an hour. And that's why it's set near that speed limit. Once the modification to the roadway is made, it will also give us flexibility, some flexibility in lowering that speed limit. Typically when we change a roadway from a four lane to a, a three lane facility, we've seen this in three or four of our streets, we were able to lower that speed limit because you're basically, people aren't racing each other anymore. They're, they're going a speed and if it feels narrow, or they'll be going a speed that's a little bit slower than it was before. So it really does give us uh, an opportunity to set that speed limit legally at a lower at a, at a lower place that's still enforceable for our police officers. So I, I appreciate those comments. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. We're going to ask you to unmute. Go ahead, Catherine. Hi there. Hello. Can you? Hi, hear me? We can. Yes. Hi. Um, I. Unfortunately, tuned in about 15 minutes late, so you may have already addressed this, but um, I think I tuned in right when you were discussing, I live on the segment near Montgomery and Short, and we don't have any crosswalks between Alderbrook and Farmers Lane, and it's really hard as a pedestrian to cross through there, and we have lots of people that walk our neighborhoods, including a lot of people down from the hospital, so I was wondering if there were any discussions of crosswalks in that area. Sorry, my son. That's that's okay. That's absolutely something that we can look at. Um, are there is there a location? Uh, sorry to ask you another uh, a question, but is there a location that you feel is is most utilized by pedestrians along that segment? Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to put crosswalks necessarily where we where we don't really want to channelize pedestrians to use, so that people can use them and vehicles will know that this is the location that people are crossing. So if there's a location that you feel is um, higher utilized, that would be great information for us to know. Thank you. Our next uh, one. Can, is, is she still there or no. can we get her back? Oh, sorry. Oh. Catherine, you could, Catherine, you could send me an email if you could, I would be, that would be great. My, my email's on the, on the slide currently. Thank you. Our next hand is named Zoom user. Zoom user, go ahead. Zoom user, can you hear us? 
you have no name on your screen. It says Zoom user. I'm not hearing anything. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one. We'll try Zoom user again later. Um, Alexa, we're going to ask you to unmute. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. You can, thank you. Thanks. Um, first of all, thank you for this amazing presentation and for all the work that went into this studying and, and, and devising this. Uh, I echo the sentiments of other speakers who have said that it's a lot, uh, a lot of great ideas and I'm very much looking forward to this infrastructure being implemented. A little bit about myself, just so you understand the context of my concerns. Uh, for about 10 years now, I've lived just off Yalupa on the east side of Montgomery Village. I have two children and I work full time at, as a professor at the JC. I'm also a very experienced cyclist. I spent three years of my life leading bike trips and bike commuting in other cities in which I've lived. So I'm not afraid of cars. Um, I'm not a timid rider, but I would say that in my extensive experience trying to ride my bike to work and to ride around the city, I have had a lot of experience in these areas and overwhelmingly they have been very negative and stressful. It would be my preference to ride my bike to school, um, to campus, uh, but in all of the time that I've done it, I've never had a, a, um, an experience I would consider safe or comfortable trying to get through Montgomery Village from the east side to the west side. Um, and uh, to echo, uh, you know, one of the commenters earlier, I think her name was Jennifer, mentioned the other stretch of Montgomery. There is a bike lane there that dead ends when you get to Hammond. So it would be great to see that um, extended. Um, but I, I just wanna make a comment about the overall presentation which is that it's clear that cyclists and pedestrians were an afterthought in the planning of all of the stretches of roads currently, and that the streets are designed to make things comfortable, convenient, and safe for cars, and everyone else is supposed to work around and defer to them. And if we have any hope of meeting our city's traffic safety, social equity, and climate commitments, this type of street design just has to go. So there were a couple points in the presentation tonight where you mentioned trying to preserve parking in that stretch of um, between Farmers and Hawman on Montgomery. I, I just think I agree with Monona, who, who was one of the previous speakers, that parking just has to go. It's not really heavily utilized. I go by there all the time and it's taking up space. And, it, and I understand the concerns of the Montgomery Village Shopping Center, but that is my understanding is that city property and we should use it for our goals, which is to reduce climate, <laughs> climate emissions and increase traffic safety um, and, and secure equity. So I really think that d dedicating that space to even improving the cyclist route through there so that that could become the primary cycling route through Montgomery Village rather than one block south on Sonoma. I guess it's a few blocks south on Sonoma where the bike lanes compete with the buses and it's horribly paved and there's cars turning in and out of the parking lot. So um, that's one place. And then the other place is on 4th Street. Um, thank you. I, I, I understand the concerns about traffic volume, but I also want to say that if we're doing our jobs right as planners and advocates, people will use their cars less. So part of the goal, you know, part of the thinking has to be that it's not just a fixed number of cars that are always going to be coming through here. I will ride my bike to campus more and thus won't be driving on 4th Street if the streets are safer. So I also wanna echo a better crossing at Talbot, which is the only safe place that I have found to cross 4th Street coming from East heading to the JC neighborhood. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much. Okay, um, because we've had so many hands up, I just want to do a quick reminder that we do have translators working behind the scenes. So as you're speaking, um, please be mindful of, of their ability to translate at the speed that you're talking. So thank you for that. Um, Tom, we're going to go ahead and ask you to unmute. Go ahead, Tom. Yes, hi, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Thank you. Um, first, 
I, I'm always impressed when the city is working towards pedestrian and bicycle safety. I see a lot of effort that way. And I appreciate this effort you're doing now. I ride those streets a lot, Montgomery and Poor Street. And first I wanna, I have two points. First, I wanna go back to Sarah at the beginning said she'd like to ride her bike, but usually there's, there's often nowhere to park her bike when she gets wherever she's going. And I suggest for all the work that the city is doing to improve bicycle safety, they, the fruit of the labor would be encouraging more bike riders out there. And to do that, it would be good to encourage destination places to put out bike racks. And, you know, I think there'd be a direct relationship between putting more bike racks out for parking and people riding their bikes. And that would be, that would make the effort that the city's doing seem justified to all users of the road. Um, the second point is, I'm, I'm disappointed, but I understand that the stretch of 4th Street eastbound between Farmers and Bryden, mostly between Rogers and Bryden, can't be changed. Now, that's a hard spot for a bike rider to get through. And your suggested alternative route is putting bikes back into their place or making them not as valuable on the road uh, as the cars. I can understand the safety part. When I ride through there, I have to be very aggressive and take the lane, the slow westbound lane. And the cars see me and they won't hit me, but it's not comfortable. But anyway, I'm just, um, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do apparently about that stretch between Rogers and Bryden westbound. But thanks again for all the work you guys are doing. Thanks, Tom. I do want to make one comment um, relating to that, and and one of that's related to um, hopefully being able to establish bike lanes on Montgomery Drive. So by establishing some of the uh, lanes on Montgomery Drive and having that link to Alderbrook or Talbot, hopefully will help uh, give it an additional alternate route um, other than using that segment of Farmers Lane. Um, but that's just that's just some another another thought. Thanks, Rob. We are going to call on Elizabeth. Elizabeth, we're asking you to unmute. I, sorry, I am so very hoarse and raspy. Let me know if at some point I become unintelligible. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. I like the plan a little bit better every time I see it, but I still continue to have some feedback. Um, my first it's probably this is probably as much a question as anything the lane layouts that we've seen are mid block but they don't show us what this is good what any of this new design might look like at intersections and i find that that is what is most lacking in the city's bike infrastructure that we have segments that are acceptable and feel okay to bike on but then when you get to the points that are actually more stressful for a cyclist we sort of get abandoned by the infrastructure. And so I would love to see how these revisions would play out at intersections in particular. So for example, what does Montgomery look like for cyclists at farmers? You showed us what it looks like a half block off farmers, but not right at farmers. Does the bike lane disappear? Are we sharing a turn lane? Um, how does that look? Um, and same question basically throughout the corridors we've discussed tonight, what does it look like at the intersections? So that's my first thing. And if it'd be possible to see what that layout looks like in advance of it actually happening, that would be great. Um, then the second is I'd like to uh, reiterate what a couple of other speakers have said. And that is that I find 4th Street a significant barrier to north-south travel on a bike. And I know that the road diet will make it somewhat easier to cross. But I'm concerned that Alderbrook isn't a great option because if you want to continue, you have to travel for a while, I think, on 4th if you're crossing at Alderbrook, Alderbrook to Clyde. And so it doesn't feel as direct and as convenient as being able to cross at Talbot to St. Helena, where it's a little bit more of a straight shot. So I 
would love to see some better north-south crossing options for bikes, especially ones that don't require getting off and walking. Oh, and then related to that, I was wondering if the design would include protected islands in the middle of the street there at the, um, so that the turn lane would not be available to cars and it would be a protected refuge in the middle of the road for people who are crossing. Thank you. Great, thanks Elizabeth. Um, I'll start with your first intersection question. And we have looked at uh, most of the intersections to make sure that we can accommodate the bike lane at least up to those intersections. Um, we'll bring back those designs in the final design that when we come back to the community in September so that we'll be able to um, show those. Uh, for, uh, I got your comment on the north-south and the barrier with 4th Street and trying to improve that without getting off the, the bike. I understand your comment there and we'll, we'll look to see if we come up with a, a good option for that. And then your last, oh, the median. The median was your last um, comment. And unfortunately that's something that we, is one of the requests from the fire department in order to maintain their emergency response with the reduction of the lanes from uh, four down to two, they requested that we did not put any median islands along that segment. Additionally, uh, that can be used as an uh, evacuation route. And so the, the two way left turn lane, they asked for that to maintain, uh, be maintained open in case they need to use it as an evacuation route as well. So that is a constraint that we have. Thank you. Sarah, we're gonna call on you, ask you to unmute. Thank you. Um, I wanted to go back a little to what um, Tom said, and that is to really think about a public campaign to get more people onto their bikes so that we, the biking community feels like more a part of Santa Rosa. Because right now when I bike around a lot, I see a lot of bikers, like people who are fast bike riders. Um, but I don't see a lot of people going from place to place, um, like bicycle commuters, like there are in some towns. And I think, you know, public campaigns to really work with um, the public and business communities in all of Santa Rosa to really make it feel like we are a bike friendly town and that it's really great to, to be able to go and do a lot of your errands on bikes because that just means fewer people on the roads and that improves road safety and also safety for bicyclists and pedestrians. So I don't know if that's at all a part of the plan or whether that's even under your umbrella of what you do because I think there's a like the other people said there's a lot that's gone into this and a lot of it is, seems really great and the work seems really good but I think we we have to work together as a whole community for really making the reduction of climate change something that really can happen and to do that we have to get out of our cars. Great thank you Sarah I'm actually gonna have our transportation planner pipe in and 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 uh, address some of that question. Yeah, good, good evening. This is Nancy Adams. Um, I am Rob's colleague in traffic engineering. And, you know, these are these are all I really have enjoyed um, and listening to all the, the comments from the community and really am, am very happy to see such a good turnout. So in regards to the campaign, so the city council, I think it's been two years ago, they, um, they actually approved a, a position for an active transportation planner that um, we hired uh, just a year ago, January. So he's been on our team for just a year, a little over a year, and that's one of the one of the areas that he's going to, you know, continue to explore and enhance for for us as a community. So um, I just wanted to let folks know that. We have been very happy to have the council approve this position and know they know how important bike and ped um, mobility in San Rosa, San Rosa is. So, um, you know, he'll he'll be working um, on on those types of activities um, as as he moves forward. So so very good suggestion and appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Uh, we're going to call Chris. Chris, go ahead. 
Hi there. Um, I have a general comment and then a couple of questions. Um, my general comment is, uh, first of all, I'm feeling really encouraged by this plan. Um, it, there are some points where I've had difficulties and it looks like those are being addressed. I'm wondering in general about um, the idea of a network, bicycle network, not just piecemeal, but how does a person who wants to get from point A to point B get there um, using a, a constant network instead of piecemeal um, pathways. And then the other thing is, have you considered quick build options for um, bikeways? So putting up paint maybe on a temporary basis and testing out some of these ideas to see how it works instead of going through a really lengthy process. It's proven successful in other cities and it gives people an, a, an opportunity to experience what it might be like without being a super permanent option. And then my, I'm pausing for a minute. And then my um, final uh, comment is I wanted to piggyback on, I think it was Elizabeth who was talking about the intersection at Farmers and Montgomery Drive and westbound at that intersection, there's a turn lane and there's a traffic lane and there, there's no place for a bicycle. And I get, I get sandwiched between cars there a lot and it, it's, it's very high risk and a very dangerous intersection. And so I'm, I'm feeling encouraged as well that there will be more um, focus and discussion and planning um, focused on intersections. So I think that's it for now. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Chris. Um, it, sometimes we do have to piecemeal some things together. Um, sometimes our funding is limited and other times development puts in a part of a, a project either before us or after us that we know is either, that might be coming. Um, so uh, sometimes, unfortunately, that is how um, projects are developed and, and funded. Um, we haven't done any of the, um, you know, restripe, repaint without telling people and see how it goes. Um, we, where, we've, where we've made changes without notifying the public first, we have heard from the public that that's not necessarily the, the way they'd like to see it done. That's one of the reasons why we're here a year plus um, ahead of this potential project from moving forward to try to get the feedback from the residents in. And, and hear from the public to, to make sure we're heading down the right the right path. So I appreciate the comment. I would love to put things in quicker, um, but we understand the, the value of getting the input and the feedback from the community ahead of time. And I thank you for your comment on Farmer's Lane. I, we, when we do the intersection uh, design and bring that back, we'll, we will make sure that we are accommodating um, the bicyclists through the intersections. Thank you. Thank you. Jenny, we're going to ask you to unmute. Hi. Yes, thank you so much for this very informative um, meeting and information. And I um, am happy to see all of the efforts the city is doing to make our city safer for cyclists. And um, I totally agree with so many of the speakers. Um, the lower speed is really critical um, to help cyclists uh, feel safe and pedestrians too are trying to cross 4th Street. Um, I also agree with the need to really identify Talbot as a, a, a crossing uh, for cyclists and to consider uh, what infrastructure, additional infrastructure could be put there. Um, I think it is a, certainly the one that I would use. Um, I usually use Humboldt Bike Boulevard to get on the uh, north side of the city. I'm, I'm down by the Highway 12. But I also, to get into uh, that, to the Proctor Terrace neighborhood, I, I would take Talbot. Um, and I do think it is a much easier crossing. I'm I'm interested in what exactly um, the city is doing at Alderbrook. I 
couldn't quite um, understand what, what the specific improvements are there. If you wouldn't mind just uh, touching on that again, because I agree. Um, Forest Street really is for very experienced cyclists. Um, and I appreciate that we're gonna try to do what we can to make it safe for them, including someone suggested, I noticed on the map a, um, um, I forget the name of it, but it's where you, you have a protected bike lane but it's on one side and both both um, the 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 different directions are on the same in the in that same cross. It's a I can't remember the name. Sorry, you cycle know what track. it is. Cycle hey, track. Thank you. Cycle track. Someone suggested a cycle track on Fourth Street. So I hate to give it up. Also, um, there are people who are brave enough to use it. Well, we should make it safe for them. And a cycle track wouldn't take as much room and could be a way to um, make a make a, the full length of, of Fourth Street um, with, with bike lanes. Um, so would like to know just what you're doing at Alderbrook. Um, also, um, I guess I want to really emphasize what several people have said is looking at our bicycle network and really identifying corridors for cyclists where they know and feel that this is a place for them where it's safe and it's been identified and um, doing what we can with signage and street markings and um, whatever other best practices are out there to really identify uh, which streets are going to be comfortable low stress for cyclists and um, I know that our, our bike and ped master plan has wonderful goals and a wonderful vision, but it has three miles of protected bike lanes in it. Um, that's so in it, in, in, that's not enough. I think we look at this planning process has to fi ha figure out how we're going to get the majority of people who will not ride a bike because they don't feel safe. Those are the people that we want to uh, help in our city feel comfortable to get on their bike. So I appreciate that we're looking at Forest Street, but I also appreciate that we're looking at, at Anne Montgomery, but I also appreciate that you're looking at what alternatives are there that can get people north, south, east, west, and protected bike lanes are the way that uh, most people are going to feel safe riding a bike. So um, I will note here that the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition has um, adopted an advocacy manifesto. And there's, if you go to bikesonoma.org um, and scroll down, you'll see it there. But one of the things that um, it says is that we should be doing default to protected bike lanes for on-street bike facilities because that is going to be how we can best help reduce collisions, injuries, and fatalities for all road users, not just cyclists. And, uh, you know, class two bike lanes really do not. Those are for very experienced, uh, brave cyclists. And the majority of people who we want to get on a bike um, need the uh, safety, the, the sense of safety of a protected bike lane. So, I, um, I just wanted to throw that out there, that the importance of really highlighting corridors and establishing protected bike lane corridors in our city, even just getting a few started. You know, right now we have Humboldt Bike Boulevard and that's barely a protected bike lane, um, but we need much more in our city to um, have the corridors north, south, east, west, where people can get across uh, busy roadways to get to where they need to go safely. So I'll stop there. I appreciate you taking all of our comments and um, I look forward to this project going forward. Great. Thanks, Jenny. I, I do want to um, just I'll revisit Alderbrook very briefly. So at Alderbrook um, at that crossing, our uh, plan is to add a bulb out on the north side in the very near future and then as the sidewalk to the south would be um, constructed and, and widened then that would also um, bring the southern section um, out to make the crosswalk of the crosswalk distance shorter and to make the pedestrians more visible and to give them better visibility 
prior to crossing this so that they can have the appropriate site distance um, along with the uh, signing and striping. And I, I did hear all your other comments regarding regarding the, the networking and I appreciate those. And um, we are looking at um, starting with some small wayfinding um, routes and see how those how those go through our city. So thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Zoom user, we're gonna try you one more time and, and then Michael will try you after that. Go ahead, Zoom user. Zoom user, can you hear us? We cannot hear you. Okay, please feel free to email Rob your comments. We're gonna move on to Michael. Michael, can you unmute? Okay, Michael, again, we still cannot hear you. So we're gonna ask you to send your comments to Rob at his email address, please. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna read the questions and answers. Rob, that will be you. <laughs> One. Have you considered underground pedestrian and bicycle crossings at Farmers Lane and 4th Street, Montgomery and Sonoma? At Farmers Lane and 4th under the creek, that would be a potential other than, otherwise, uh, no, that has not been considered as a, as a, option uh, potentially under the creek um i don't think there's a lot of uh freeboard between the water line and definitely not this time of, well maybe this time of year if it's not raining um we do have some under creek crossings or some under roadway crossings at creeks that um are utilized quite a bit on the santa rosa creek path which work very well um if so if there is a location that we can implement something of that matter yes but as far as just an underground type crossing no that has not been considered Thank you. Uh, Chrissy asks, are there any plans to repave Montgomery Drive between Farmers Lane and Summerfield Road? So we do have part of this project and um, and one of the reasons why we're looking at, well, not the reason, but one of the, the opportunities we have um, to implement this project on a sooner basis than maybe would have otherwise is that these streets that we are, have identified and the segments we have identified um, are slated to be slurried, which is basically a new paving wear course. Um, so it gives us an opportunity to basically have a blank canvas when it gets this new treatment. So uh, Fourth Street will be done and Montgomery will be done to Farmers and I believe to Hallman. Um, however, I'm not, I don't know off the top of my head if uh, Montgomery between Hallman and Summerfield, I believe, with the limits is on that list. So I'd have to check on that. Thank you. Danielle asks, uh, she actually has two questions. So I'll ask the first one, and the second question will be hers too. Fourth Street westbound traffic is often at a very high rate of speed approaching Alderbrook. What measures can be taken to slow down traffic, especially to the addition of crosswalks? So as I mentioned um, in, with one of the other questions was just by reducing the amount of, um, of travel lanes from a four lane facility to a three lane facility will help address some of the speeding um, that occurs. Basically, if one person is doing a speed limit and you're behind that person, it forces you and everyone behind, behind you to do that speed limit or less. So um, by, by virtue of, of making a one lane facility in each direction really does help address some of the speeds um, that maybe people are seeing today. Thank you. Uh, Danielle also makes a comment, making left turns from either Alderbrook or Talbot onto Forest Street is treacherous. High speed vehicles sneak up fast and the visibility is minimal. And then her question is, when school gets out at St. Eugene's, the traffic the traffic is a complete bunch and also on Sundays. What analysis is included mitigating traffic motions causing congestion? 
so we are we on that segment of farmers we are basically re reassigning the the width of the lanes to allow us to add in the bike lanes in that segment so um we aren't reducing the capacity on that portion of of montgomery drive um so if it's a unfortunately if it's a mess now it will probably continue to be a mess but it shouldn't be worse of a mess than it is um i know that's not a great answer um and with that comment we will actually take that information and look and see if we could um make sure that we we won't make things worse and maybe be able to help some things with um, the design of the roadway striping out there. So we'll take that into consideration when we're looking at the striping in that section um, in particular. Thank you. Uh, Matt says, asks, is there any plan to connect bike paths to the smart train? Bike paths to the smart train? Um, uh, yeah, a bike path to the smart train. Yes. So there is a multi-use path that currently does um, go along north-south along the, the rail from, currently only goes from Guerneville down to, um, I believe, 6th Street. And then there is a small gap uh, to the station um, as part of a development that will be constructed on the west side of the rail there, an additional pathway will be installed to get to the station. And then from the station to the south, um, we do have a, a project to install a signal at the rail crossing in conjunction with a new roadway that will um, connect over from 3rd Street to 6th Street. And that signal will also facilitate access across 3rd Street to the Joe Rodota Trail and the bike path. It's uh, the multi-use path that's on that side of the street. So as far as bike paths that go east-west to connect to the station directly, um, there's the Santa Rosa Creek Trail, which connects to the MUP, the multi-use path. And, uh, and that's the only one I could think of at this point. Thank you. Uh, Nancy would like to answer the next question for our anonymous attendee. The question is on 4th between E and Brookwood, is it possible slash good design to have the parallel park cars on the north side buffering bike lane two? Nancy's going to answer that question. Uh, yeah, this is Nancy. Rob, I'm not sure why they're asking me to answer it. I think you're probably more the appropriate person. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you re restate the question? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, it says on 4th between E and Brookwood, is it possible slash good design to have the parallel parked cars on the north side buffering the bike lane too? So so the 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 buffered bike lane the separation between the diagonal parking and the bike lane was on the north side the parallel parking was on the south side so i, I think the question is can we make both of them parallel and have them be protected bike lanes with the bikes between the parked cars and this is what I'm anticipating the question is the park cars and the sidewalk. That, that is a, a possibility and it is a design concept we can look at. One of the issues is that it does reduce, it does reduce the amount of parking that is on that segment. And I, I did hear people and I understand that parking is, um, you know, a, a minor portion for a lot of the people on the call. And, However, there is a very large development that's being constructed down in that location right now, and it is an un unknown of how that parking will impact um, the area. So not that I am necessarily opposed to removing parking, but what I don't want to have happen is there won't be parking available and it impacts the neighbors and the neighborhood in that area um, adversely. So I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, but that is a design concept we could look at. 
Thank you. Anonymous attendee also asks, on 4th between Brookwood and Brighton, why not bike lanes buffered by cars? I believe the bike, I think that's the same question. Bike lanes buffered by cars. Yeah, this one is fourth between Brookwood and Brighton, and the other one was E and Brookwood. Okay, I think it's I think it's the same concept as having the parking adjacent to the travel lane, and having the bike lane adjacent to the curb. One of the issues that um, is a potential with that, and I understand the concept. I've 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 seen it done before. One of the concerns with that is that. Um, the the passengers aren't always aware that 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 bicycles are in that zone and don't necessarily expect them to be so that's where that's where kids get out and they open the door and that's where passengers get out and aren't ex expecting necessarily to be looking for a bike whereas on the driver's side they're more accustomed to that so it could be applied but there would be definitely a learning curve uh for the the users of those um we would also have to make sure that we would set up a, a way to be able to do the street sweeping, which I don't think would be an issue there because it's typically, those are businesses and typically it's not parked at night. So that shouldn't be an issue. Sorry, I'm just talking through this. Thank you. Uh, so Zoom user type their, their response and I'm gonna read it. Okay, just, I just want to say one, the section of Montgomery Heyman to Summerfield must be high priority. Two, we need to slow down traffic on 4th College to Alderbrook, especially at Alderbrook Bridge, capitalized enforcement. Three, we need to secure bike parking at destinations. Four, why don't you feel it's important to save parking on Montgomery between Heyman farmers question get rid of it and then not really questions but confirmations okay. was there was there quite those were more comments in yeah there, correct? No. okay okay so he's saying not really questions just okay yeah Got it. He, thank he, you she. uh and that is all we have for comments so i guess i'll ask if any of those comments or questions brought up any other comments or questions from the other users before we sign off. And I'm not seeing any hands raise. So then at this point with no further questions, I'd really like to express my appreciation to everyone who participated in the meeting, the public, our, our panelists, the interpreters and the hosts for uh, participating tonight. We really appreciate everyone taking the time to listen through our local road safety plan. Um, I'm thrilled we had so many participants here today. As I mentioned earlier, in addition to your participation in the meeting, we would also like you to visit the project website. Um, that's listed on the screen and take a short survey uh, for either for both Fourth Street improvements and for other improvements along Montgomery Drive. And you can also provide your feedback on the interactive map. Uh, we appreciate your participation in tonight's meeting and we hope you can join us on March 2nd. Um, we'll be focusing on the roadway safety improvements over on Dutton Avenue between West College and West Third. So thank you again for, uh, for everything tonight. Good night. Lauren Ivory promoted you to host.